What's going on everyone? It's your boy Savvy and welcome back to the Savvy Show. And in today's episode, guys, we got another spicy one on our hands, man. This is the infamous SCP-6000 and I have been waiting for a channel to pick this up. And none other than one of my favorite non-animation channels, the Exploring series, is tackling this bad boy. This is SCP-6000, the Serpent, the Moose, and the Wanderer's Library. So I did my best not to go too deep in this SCP when it, you know, won the contest itself but i already know about the wanderer's library so i'm interested to see if these two other attachments the serpent and the moose is affiliated with this somehow or if they're separate stories in their own right and they just became one tale within 6000 i'm assuming they all flow together so if they do i hope it meshes well i hope it's juicy for the family i can't wait to dive deep with you guys so if you guys are excited for this non-animation reaction remember to smash that like button guys this is scp 6000 the one that won the contest so show some love i'm sure it's going to be juicy first man it has to be so don't be too shy on that like button man he's been talking a lot of smack to me so please punch him a few times for me for the family guys for the family so um yeah and also remember hit that bell and also smash that sub button and join the family if you're not already part of it if you're not i'm, I'm kind of surprised but um <laughs> if you like the vibe you like the flow you like the reaction style this is home guys this is home so let's get it together with that being said there's nothing left to be said let's get this show started all righty scp 6000 the serpent the moose and the wanderers library lego scp 6000 the serpent the moose and the wanderers library Aside from the community, the artwork, the games, the videos, and the memes, stories are the heart of the SCP universe. Every single article on the site tells some form of story, from something as simple as a rock that makes you procrastinate to the most expansive of connected canons. Stories like and the authors picture. who create them are what keep us coming back to the universe. And it's the nature of these stories that SCP-6000 is about. Specifically, their endings. Let's take a look. SCP-6000 has of course been classified by order of the Overseer Council, and we see that the person currently accessing the file is an individual named Director Moose. Oh. This would be Director Tilda Moose, the director of Site-19 and co-director of Site-17. She's notably a type blue individual, as codenamed by the GOC, <laughs> meaning blue? that she's capable of using thaumatology or magic. Whoa, she... that's big. Okay, I need to remember that because thaumatology, magic, I was always interested in see like who could actually use that and if they have to be like a special kind of human because people that use that are just regular humans and it's like magic in this world. So that is cool to find out. You have to be type blue to use that kind of magic. Okay. She's also a former member of the Serpent's Hand, a group opposed to the SCP Foundation that's dedicated to the release and normalization of the Anomalous. Yep, and that makes sense because they are attached to the Wanderer's Library, the Serpent's Hand. So we already seen what it's about. It's very rare for a Serpent's Hand member to leave and join the Foundation, and even more rare for one of them to rise as highly as Tilda has. Interesting. I wonder if We're then know. informed by the Foundation's Records Administration that when the SCP-6000 slot was first automatically pre-generated as an empty placeholder, two files were found attached to it, with no file history available. The O5 Council has left the files unaltered, just in case, but none of the following events have occurred, and the location listed for SCP-6000 contains nothing of note. The first file is linked to a Project Fusillade, seemingly an SCP Foundation and Global Occult Coalition joint operation. That's new. SCP-6000 itself is described as a massive dimensional extrusion located in the Amazon rainforest in Brazil. It represents the largest way, or extra-dimensional portal, ever encountered by the Foundation, as it currently measures 19 kilometers across. So it's a giant portal. Its presence is also affecting a much larger area around it, changing the plant and animal life in the area, and the way is continuing to expand at an unstable rate. SCP-6000 connects our reality with that of the Wanderer's Library, 
an extra-dimensional location consisting of seemingly an infinitely large library. Okay, so it's like the middle middle dimension. So there's like our dimension, and then this SCP, and then the Wanderer's Library, from what it seems like. And this is the biggest portal. Wow. Supposedly, the library contains all knowledge, past, present, and future, with a specific focus on thaumaturgy and magic. It's home to a number of entities referred to as librarians, ranging in different sizes and shapes, and those that break the rules of the library are transformed into these entities in order to work off their debt. The Serpent's Hand used the library as a form of home base, since the library is welcoming of those that wish to embrace the anomalous. Thus, the library was originally barred to groups such as the Foundation or the GOC, but recently this ban has been relaxed somewhat. Director Moose, being a former member of the Hand, had spent a great deal of time inside of the library, but she hasn't returned since joining the Foundation. I wonder if she could return. I wonder if she tries to. Would that mean that she kind of broke the rules because she went to the SCP side and would she be turned to, you know, one of the librarians to pay off her debt? That'd be kind of interesting to see. SCP-6000 was discovered in December of 2030 when an anomaly resembling an iridescent rip in space around a half a kilometer long appeared in the Amazon rainforest. It was immediately evident that it was a way leading to the library, but it was the largest ever encountered and was already changing nearby plants and animals. A three-man reconnaissance team was sent in, but weren't heard from again, so an MTF was sent in afterwards. The team found the other's equipment and supplies, with tracks leading towards the way. While searching for the missing team, they found the corpses of twelve individuals dressed in robes, surrounding a thaumaturgic ritual circle. Serpent's hand? In the center of the circle was a large, snake-like entity, ending with the head and upper body of a female human. The entity was in a comatose state, so it was quickly airlifted to a nearby Foundation facility. A detachment of the MTF was sent in to further investigate the portal to the library, accompanied by Tilda Moose, due to her extensive experience with Ways, the library, and the Serpent's Hand. Okay, so, so far it just seems like we might not just get like a SCP Serpent or Moose, it might just be like, you know, these are just representations of, you know, Director Moose will be the Moose, the Serpent will be the Serpent's Hand, and the Wanderer's Library will be the Wanderer's Library, and how they all vibe together and mesh together, or maybe just Director... Director Moose's story because she was attached to the Serpent's Hand and the Wanderer's Library. So, hmm, let's see. As they enter into the area around the way, they note sounds coming from ahead, and the air around them seems to shimmer like an oil slick. They then notice a tree trunk that has been transfigured into a bookshelf, although no books are present, and they see other trees nearby that are actively undergoing the same process. Hmm. As they pass over a ridge, they then see that a large swath of the forest has completely disappeared and been replaced with a cut in space, leading into an empty wing of the Wanderer's Library. Ah. That's Tilda entrance. remarks that she's never seen empty bookshelves in the library, and the rest of the team are instructed to enter in while Tilda stays behind to avoid upsetting the librarians. Exactly. So that's what I figured. They probably wouldn't want her back in because she, you know, she jumps ship. <laughs> okay, cool. As they approach the edge of the library, one of the team kicks at the dirt on the ground, revealing hardwood floor underneath. They step in. And since all members of the team have had some experience in the library, they note that it feels different than normal, realizing that it's an unfinished section with no roof and no varnish on the shelves. They're interrupted by the arrival of a massive red millipede, a local denizen. They try calling out to it, but it screeches and hisses at them, and a voice from elsewhere says that it sees their intentions and they should leave. Uh-oh. Several librarian entities in the form of human arachnids crawl over the tops of nearby shelves at this point, notably wearing the uniforms of the reconnaissance team. 
The team is not sure what's happening, as they didn't break any rules, but they begin to flee regardless. Well, oh. they just said that they read your mind and they know your intentions or something, so you probably are planning to break the rules. <laughs> not that you've done it yet. <laughs> and they're just stopping you ahead of time. A librarian tackles one of the team to the ground, and Tilda fires her handgun at the entities from outside of the library. Another of the team rushes back to aid the grabbed member, punching the librarian in the face, but they're both swarmed by multiple other librarians. Sheesh. They're left behind as two attack helicopters swoop in to lay down suppressive fire and drop ropes for Tilda and the remaining team member. Both the sudden, unprovoked hostility from the library, as well as the transformation of the reconnaissance team into librarians despite no rules being broken, prompted an emergency council meeting to decide what to do. Project Fusilade was instituted to contain and mitigate the effects of the way, and to determine the changing situation with the library. Okay. A perimeter was created around the way to keep out wildlife and travelers. The nearby Foundation facility was redirected to focus on containing SCP-6000, and an arrest order was put out for all known cells of the Serpent's Hand. What the hell? Why? Shortly after this, the snake-like entity woke up during an examination by medical personnel, immediately attacking them. It was quickly disabled by security guards, and while in containment, it repeatedly referenced the library and the serpent's hand, so Tilda was brought in to perform some interviews. The entity refers to Tilda as a jailer, so she assumes that means that it's a member of the serpent's hand. The entity responds that she can't remember if she is or isn't. All she remembers is floating in a void, dreaming, sitting under an apple tree, hearing something whisper stories into her ear, wow. and then waking up here. That's her. Tilda asks if she remembers how she became this form, and after looking at herself in a mirror, Broke the rules. she learns that her form has changed into this snake creature. She says that the voice did say that it would mold her into its image. And when Tilda asks her about the voice, she says that it was with her the entire time she was dreaming, dangling from the branches of the tree, murmuring tales and stories and myths, including stories about the Foundation, the GOC, and the library itself. Tilda reveals to her that she's been into the library many times, and asks what she knows about the way in the Amazon. The entity agrees to trade a story for a story, uh -oh. as her mind is bursting with stories, Damn. but the only way to know a story is to tell it. She asks Tilda to tell her the story of her last time in the library, to help her remember what the library was like. Tilda says that it was around 15 years ago, and her relationship with the Serpent's Hand was on the rocks. She managed to use some magical rituals to get into a forbidden section of the library known as the Five Archives, where new librarians are made. While there, she took books, maps of ways, and various lists that would aid the Foundation against the library, wow. and then left, freely admitting to betraying the library. Oh my god. The entity asks her to describe the library to her, and Tilda says that hopefully she already knows on some level, as describing it to someone who hasn't seen it is practically impossible. <laughs> it's utterly alien, foreign, and beyond the cusp of understanding, Damn. describing it as the center of the universe. She says that it's infinite in size, but the entity corrects her and says that it's impossibly large as it's eternally expanding as new stories are written and new knowledge is found. It consumes dead stories that have ended and turns them into shelves for other stories. Oh, that's interesting. Wow. The dead stories. How could a story die, though? Stories are indefinite, right? Stories last on forever when we all die. So it's interesting to see what they consider a dead story. But that's cool that the dead stories turns into shelves home for the new stories, like holding them up, you know? <laughs> I like that. The entity's story to tell is about a little girl who woke up and found that she could spin fire. 
She lit toys and candles on fire until men with guns kicked down her door and tried to take her away. She then learned that she could also light people on fire, uh -oh. and it was far less fun. She ran and ran until she met some people, street witches and miracle makers, who were just like her. They allowed her to enter a world where she could be herself without fear of reprisal, the library. She proceeded to walk among the shelves and read every single story she wanted, but she found a problem in that all of the stories ended and she continued to wonder what happened after the stories ended. Tilda says that she can relate, but asks what it has to do with the situation here. The entity isn't sure, as she's still sorting through the stories, but she says to look for the serpent's hand, as they helped that girl, so maybe they can help Tilda. This commenced Operation Black Star, a worldwide raid on all known Serpent's Hand cells, numbering 57 safe houses in total. All 57 of them were found to be completely cleared out and empty, and in 30 of them, ways were present and still active, all of which led to the same section of the library as SCP-6000. As far okay. as the Foundation can tell, the Serpent's Hand have completely abandoned the planet. At this point, SCP-6000 had grown to one kilometer across, affecting an area three kilometers across. Damn. In a statement to the that O5 portal. Council, Tilda said that if the library has turned against humanity, the situation is going to be dire, as it's a completely alien entity to us. The library is both humanity's greatest boon and its greatest threat. Much of history has been influenced by people getting into the library and bringing back knowledge, but things could be pretty bad if the source of all knowledge in the universe turns against them. As they should, you guys turned against it first. Literally, this director literally took books and betrayed the library. I mean, you're part of the problem. Unfortunately, the Foundation is having some trouble in trying to neutralize SCP-6000. Scranton reality anchors have had no effect on it, and even though ways normally dissipate after a few minutes, SCP-6000 has lasted for weeks and continues to grow. Additionally, none of the other ways they found leading into the library have dissipated either. Okay, so the ways are like the ripples in the dimension that leads to the actual Wanderer's Library. I'm pretty sure that's what they're talking about when they say ways within S SCP-6000. The area around SCP-6000 is being actively changed into part of the library, with trees turning into shelves, oh, wow. writing appearing on leaves, animals being warped and transfigured. It's like the Wanderer's Library is leaking out into SCP-6000, because it still should be like just a pathway to go to the Wanderer's Library, but it looks like from these ways, the library is leaking and making the library more so the path to get to the library, which is 6,000. Hmm. Since the area is continuing to expand, you can see how big of a problem this could be. Yeah. It's they have some ideas of things to try, though. They attempt to use a bunch of flamethrowers to just burn the area <laughs> down, but oh God. it just regenerates, yeah, so that's a no-go. They then launch some missiles straight into the way, but all of them fail to detonate once passing into the library. Finally, they turn something called the Atreus Array onto it, a satellite-based reality anchoring system. Whoa. They fire it at full power, but it does absolutely nothing. Tilda has another interview with the Snake Entity. She remembers being a young woman in a sect of the Hand, searching for the worship of knowledge in the library and outside of it. The mention of worship surprises Tilda, who says that the Serpent's Hand never really worshipped knowledge while she was with them. The Entity says that the Hand started out as a cult thousands of years ago, called the Hand of the Serpent. They were a warrior cult, dedicated to the worship of the Serpent that created the library. Oh. The Serpent is said to be knowledge incarnate, and the spirit of learning, also known as the Naga. Your
Ermengonder and the biblical snake in the tree. Okay, so the Naga was the one that was speaking to the serpent's ear, telling the serpent, you know, the person that turned into a serpent that wasn't a serpent to begin with. The Naga made that person into its own image and kept on telling her stories. And she felt like she was dreaming and everything probably because of those said stories. But maybe she was just wandering around. Dang, I wonder what she did to get the punishment or the blessing to become the splitting image, if not, or at least look like the Naga. The Hand were powerful, long-lived monks, but eventually they died out and left their teachings behind on why the spread of knowledge was the greatest honor possible and should be done at all possible cost. Many years later, people discovered these writings and called themselves the New Serpent's Hand, leaving behind the rituals of the cult, but continuing the worship of knowledge as an ideal. Okay. Matilda had no idea about the origins of the Serpent's Hand, and the entity had not been told by them either, but instead she heard this story from the Serpent in her dreams. Due to the ritual oh, that was performed wow. in the Amazon rainforest, she spoke to the Serpent that created the library. She heard stories of the Serpent singing the library into reality at the beginning of creation, <laughs> and then singing? retiring to slumber under its foundation. Tilda asks if she heard any stories about how to stop the library when it goes insane and out of control, since the library is supposed to remain completely neutral. The entity says that there are no stories of people stopping the library like that, because that's not how this story ends. Tilda tries to argue that endings can change, but the entity replies that oh. endings are set in stone, but endings don't matter anyways. To an observer, Tilda's story ended when she betrayed the library and came to the Foundation. Yeah. But it didn't, as she didn't cease to exist. Instead, she transitioned to a new narrative. Oh, so stories end when you cease to exist. So that's what equals a dead story then. Because your story's finished. Huh, okay. So I guess stories don't live on when you die, at least in this um, canon or this reality. Wow. Tilda responds that this isn't a narrative, it's her life. The entity says the that narrative. the little girl from her story read and read until she realized that she had already solved her problem. Of course, all the stories ended, but there were always more stories, and there was no point in lamenting the inevitable when she could just move on. She says that all of the stories she sees, with the Foundation staring down the end of the world, they have the GOC on their side. Rivals allying themselves against a great threat. A fusillade of fire against a wall of trees. This remark by the entity led to an O5 vote to expand Project Fusillade and begin working with the Global Occult Coalition. The vote, of course, passed, because when you need something absolutely destroyed, who better to call? Not long after, a GOC strike team was sent into the way to attempt to gain access to the library and ascertain the situation from the inside. The Seriously team soon enters the library through the way, passing by the empty shelves and being unaccosted by librarians. They soon come across a lectern holding a single thin book with the words, In Progress, embossed into it. They then hear the same hissing, unidentified voice from the last team's attempt, asking them why they are here. One of the team responds, slowly, that they're just following orders, and they're not sure why they're here. The voice responds that they wanted to see what the other side of the Fade was like. Dang. It says that it once saw a patron here, consumed by questions about the library and how it worked wondering how it was possible that the library was infinite. The voice says that it's because of stories, as the library takes finished stories into its shelves and takes finished worlds into itself. It says that the members of the team finished are pure worlds? of heart, ordered by men who hate what is going to happen to their story, and they are welcome here. 
The signal then cuts out, followed by a rapid expansion of growth from the way, growing to nearly three kilometers in size in a matter of a couple hours. Wow. Even worse, several radio signals began broadcasting from SCP-6000, as well as all the ways they found in different Serpent's Hand safe houses. The signals all contain the same message, the hissing voice from the library repeating the exact coordinates of SCP-6000, as well as the phrase, the garden is the serpent's place. It of course did not take long at all for the world to become aware of this, despite the Foundation's efforts to stop it, and Jeez. word began to spread of something strange happening in the Amazon. Official satellite photos oh of God. the area These all showed nice. nothing of note, but other footage, such as from wildlife observation cameras in the area, showed SCP-6000 in all its glory. A number of individuals began to try to reach the area on foot, an effort that was easily stopped by the Foundation, yep. but word continued to spread. During this time, the way continued to rapidly expand to nearly six kilometers across, with no signs of stopping. Yo, this is bad. The other member of the MTF that escaped the initial encounter with SCP-6000 alongside Tilda ended up disappearing from his room one night. They found a thaumaturgic ritual circle drawn into the floor of his quarters, oh God. and footage showed a sudden <laughs> burst of light appearing near SCP-6000 at the same time he disappeared. He did some crazy. He was then seen moving through the foliage and entering the library. He left a note behind, addressed to Tilda, oh, explaining see. that when he first entered the library as part of a mission, he experienced something amazing, something well beyond what he thought was ever possible. He also thought it was a shame that they looked at something so magnificent and only worried about how it might hurt them. That's what I'm saying. The it's librarians knowledge. seem to only be harming people that try to stop the expansion, and he has no intention of doing that. He tells Tilda that this is the end of the story and it isn't one where they somehow come up with a silver bullet to fix everything. The only thing he can do now is change how he feels about it, and he thinks that this is his happy ending. Going to the library? Tilda goes back to the snake entity, who says that she told her right from the start that this isn't the kind of story where they find a way to fix everything. Just let it be, that's what I'll do. Tilda says that she's not going to just roll over and die. But the entity says that no one well, has yeah. died. Yeah, who, how's it going to kill you? Tilda is obviously confused about the situation, but the entity says that she can't explain it to her, comparing it to trying to scream into a book when the characters frustrate you. <laughs> All you can do wow. is watch it play out. Moose wow. wants to know how it ends, and to know that she did everything she could to stop it. That's actually, the that's actually really deep when you think about it, because... She, the serpent using that analogy that is like screaming in a book about the characters to do something different. It's obviously different levels of reality within that. So she's basically alluding to like she can't even change the story and she could only watch and read to see it play out. No matter what she does, no matter what she says, whatever, whatever influence that that director Moose thinks that the serpent will have on her, it won't, there wouldn't be any influence because the story is still playing out. Because technically she has no power over changing this story. Wow. I, I, I like that, I like that. Entity says that Tilda already knows how it ends, and denial doesn't fix anything. She went to that ritual in the Amazon to know how her story ended, and she learned how this world's story ended, the two being one and the same. Oh, so that's her ending this too. This story ends with two people sitting in a room, talking, before vanishing into thin air. Moose and Serpent? She says that Tilda should be flattered, because even though she won't admit it, it's clear that she wants to see the library again. Tilda denies it, saying that the library screwed her long before she screwed it, and she leaves. SCP-6000 <laughs> continues to expand, out to 13 kilometers in length, and the Foundation begins drafting plans for a broken masquerade scenario in which the world becomes aware of anomalies. 
Dang. This ends the first file that was found on the Foundation's database and leads into the second one. This file immediately informs us that containment of SCP-6000 has failed, and much of the Foundation has fled the planet. SCP-6000 now covers around 58% of the Earth's surface and is still actively growing, with projections indicating that it will cover the planet within a few weeks. Dang, so it's taken in a dead world, just like it takes in dead stories. Wow. Nothing the Foundation or the GOC did slowed it down, and everything within its area is now considered lost, with Foundation and Fusilade personnel evacuating to extra-dimensional backup sites. They did recover an audio log from the Foundation facility near where 6000 started before it was taken over by the anomaly. They had believed that all personnel had been evacuated beforehand, but later learned that Tilda had never boarded any of the evacuation helicopters. She's going back to the In library. The, log, <laughs> the snake entity tells Tilda that she shouldn't worry, as leaving this world is not as scary as it sounds. Tilda says that she's understating what's about to happen, as there's nothing natural about this, and they're sitting and watching the apocalypse with nothing to do about it. The entity asks her if she thinks there's going to be anything after this. Tilda assumes she's referring to an afterlife, but she clarifies, asking her what she thinks will happen after the way covers the whole world. The entity says that Tilda knows on a logical level that the sun will eventually burn out one day, and we go through our lives knowing that the universe will have an ending. Tilda tries to argue that that's a natural ending, but the entity retorts that the slow, agonizing heat death of the universe is no more natural than what's happening now. She says that we live our lives knowing that nothing lasts forever, but we don't let knowing that there's an end ruin the story for us, because uh -huh. there are always more stories. Where there was once one story about a foundation and their valiant stand-down with the end of the world, afterwards there will be a thousand million new stories and a thousand million new worlds inside them. The library doesn't just connect to all the worlds, it is all the worlds, with every world a story and every story a world. So it's, it's probably just going to take in this control. world. This is just the end of this world story, and it's becoming part of the library. Yep, figured. Tilda laments that nothing she or anyone could have done would have stopped this, but the entity says that the point was to make new stories, where there was once nothing, and Tilda should be happy, as her story is going to be remembered forever. At this point, the file offers two branching responses from Tilda, one in which she asks what happens if she doesn't want any new stories, and you another choice. in which she asks if people will read about them. Both responses lead to the same answer, however, as the entity says that, like she's been telling her, Tilda doesn't get to pick the ending of the story. <laughs> you don't have a choice. But she only gets to pick how to take it, yeah. either sitting down and crying that the old stories are gone, or, just finish reading it. or smiling and moving on to the next shelf. At that moment, the site was taken over by SCP-6000, and Tilda found herself inside of the library. The snake entity was gone, replaced with a young woman with the tattoo of a snake wrapped around a wrist on her face. What if that was her before? She welcomes Tilda home, and says that even though the library is the end of her story, it's not a bad thing, as she gets to move on to the next story. As Tilda looks around at the other people nearby, she, she notices some of them are members of the MTF and Project Fusilade, and even some of the O5 members. The girl tells Tilda that the end isn't death, even though she was stubbornly clinging to the idea for such a long time. For real. Tilda asks if there will be new stories, with more worlds with the Foundation, and versions of her. The girl says that there already are, and pulls out a book titled SCP-6000, telling her to get to reading. 
Wow. So, Chill. so they're just part of the library now, to be honest. Because the library is vast, has multiple world, worlds. So she's just part of it. She's not dead. Lola looks around and says that she thinks this is it. Her happy ending. There's definitely a lot to unpack here. Not all of which I want to try and explain. The central focus of this article, as I said, is stories. Yeah. The SCP universe is filled with stories, and since the Wanderer's Library is the source of all knowledge, and thus all stories, it is the center of their universe. All new stories, meaning different timelines, worlds, canons, scenarios, etc., come from the library. And so, when those stories end, the library takes them back into itself. The world in which SCP-6000 took place was a story, and it eventually came to an end, thus necessitating the library to take it back into its folds. Tilda thought wow. the whole time, like most of the Foundation, that this meant death for the people in the story. Never lit it to. But a story doesn't have to end in death. She was able to re-enter the library, something she had secretly wanted for a long time, and was able to experience the multitude of stories featuring other worlds, other SCP Foundations, and other Tildas. The last section of the article links to three different pages. One, when Tilda asks if there will be other stories featuring her, links to the author Rounder House's SCP-001 proposal, Memento Mori, in which Tilda oh. died trying to perform a ritual to re-enter the library. Wow. The second link, in which the girl tells Tilda to get to reading, links to the latest series of SCP articles, Series 7, which starts with SCP-6000. The final link is when Tilda mentions that this is her happy ending, and it links to the Wanderer's Library site. The Wanderer's Library is a sister site to the SCP Wiki, and features articles that tend to be more whimsical and fantastical in tone, mm. mainly focused on creating a sense of wonder. Rounder House is an administrator of the Wanderer's Library, so this article is intended to be a love letter to both the library and the SCP universe. SCP-6000 isn't meant to be a hard-hitting, apocalyptic tale that goes into great detail of how the world ended and what the Foundation yeah, did to desperately try different. to stop it. Instead, it's a piece about stories and how they inevitably come to an end, whether we want them to or not. No power over it. And that it. there's always more stories to be had. We can't always pick how the story ends. We can only pick how to take it. I like that. I really like that saying. That line that the serpent said. That was awesome. This was great. This is <laughs> honestly, I didn't think it would be like a jam-packed, scary, apocalyptic SCP. I thought it would be something similar to, you know, one, the Wanderer's Library, and how is it tied with these two entities, the Moose and the Serpent? And now, now we see it was like the Serpent and the Moose, you know, talking about what's going on, what's going to happen, and what was inevitable, and how they were going to take it. Oh man, I like the concept and how they incorporate the, all the stories and everything. How some stories die and some stories live on, and this world was just part of the story that concluded so i really like this if you guys did enjoy this reaction please remember to smash that like button show some love man this was an awesome awesome pick for scp 6000 i hope you guys all felt the same also remember hit that bell so you can stay plugged for each and every upload and remember subscribe to the channel if you're not already part of the family so with that being said unfortunately that concludes today's episode however i'll catch you guys on the next one